I'm going to start off <clears throat> with the mellophone, and uh, I'm not going to uh, show you a marching mellophone in all of its uh, glory. What I'm going to show you is the original, otherwise referred to as the classic. Now, this is a mellophone. This particular one is a huttle made in Canada. Um, huttles started out, I believe, in Germany, and they moved their operation to Canada, and they made school band instruments that everybody thought were execrable because they were slightly low pitch. And that was certainly the case in this one. I, as you can see, I've had surgery performed on this instrument um, to bring it up to pitch. Um, the problem with huddle band instruments in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s um, was that they were, uh, in the original European, slightly low pitch. We had a bunch of them when I was in high school in the late uh, 60s, early 70s. And our band sounded awful, mainly because it was a mishmash of A440 uh -huh. instruments and uh, uh, British and German and French instruments that were... Some of them were slightly high pitch, some of them were slightly low pitch. And so uh, we were trying to uh, lip certain instruments up and yank everything out on other instruments to get the pitch down and sort of like uh, generally play in uh, a ballpark area of any particular key at the time. And then you have to consider the grief that this created for the woodwinds because you don't have much room to play around with a clarinet or an oboe. Uh, flute, you got the head stock and you can rotate your beep, 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 change the pitch, but other instruments are not so fortunate. So our bands were destined to sound awful back in the day. But anyway, we had lots of these things. I got started and around 1970, uh, I was playing a York and Sons mellophone that was an E flat and F, excellent old horn. Uh, I love that old beast, and I, I played it uh, until I was out of high school, and it got me researching the mellophone. I was curious, where did this thing come from? Well, it took me until 2006 to find the answer to that question. And I didn't find the answer to that question. Um, Niles Eldridge, uh, the paleontologist, has the uh, the oldest known mellophone instrument. It's called a coning horn, invented by uh, in conjunction with a fellow named Herning, Herman Koenig in 1856. Um, that is the progenitor. It was an F like this horn. Um, some design differences. Now, Hermann Koenig was, uh, in the mid-19th century, was a cornet player. And that's important because he was looking for an instrument that a cornet player could play. And uh, the instrument was bigger in here. Um, at a, it was closer in design uh, to uh, the distant ballad horn, a C instrument. Um, now, Koenig was not looking for an instrument to replace or compete with the French horn. His instrument seems to have been, it, it was a family, like the, there is a C, a little C instrument uh, still in existence. Um, but it wasn't mass produced. Uh, very few of these horns have been found and they weren't made to compete with the French horn. That is a myth that came later on and I'll explain how that came to be. Um, this horn is a conical instrument. It's conical through here and then 
once you come out here, it's conical. Where are you there? All the way out there. It's a very conical instrument. Um, some would call it a comical instrument, but I call it a conical instrument. The vowels need work. Um, so there you have it. This is the classic mellophone. It is a conical instrument, and this one plays an F. Now, where did the idea that the uh, mellophone was intended to be a substitute for the French horn, well, that's a convoluted bit of uh, uh, name swapping and sharing. That comes from this instrument. Here. This instrument is um, a circular alto horn, also known as uh, an alt horn, but also the uh, um, E flat alto slash tenor sax horn is also sometimes referred to as an alt horn, and the alto tuba invented by Cervene, Cervene, patented in 1853, is also sometimes referred to as an alt horn. Um, this horn is very, very different from a mellophone, and I'll show you why. Um, this tubing here from the mouthpiece receiver into the valve block and out here and out to about here is cylindrical. This, all of this is cylindrical, and then this last little bit is conical, is a cone. So it's a very different instrument from um, a mellophone, and it's a much different beast to play. These instruments each have their own, um, uh, how would you put it? Their, their own uh, usable register, the, the ease of which you can play is different on each of these instruments. Um, and for that reason, it's a very bad mistake to transcribe music for the French horn, especially the one in F, uh, for the uh, F mellophone, because you've got a mouthpiece that's this big, in a mellophone and you're suddenly expected to play way out of your range killing your chops whereas a uh, french horn i got a mouthpiece here as a mouthpiece this size Doo -doo -doo. and this is a very large uh mouthpiece but this uh alt horn mouthpiece is still bigger um, big mugger. Anyway, I'll put this back here. This horn, if you look at it carefully, at the way the tubing is arranged, a fellow named M. Linier, uh, was a French military guy in the early 1880s, uh, deliberately invented this instrument to be an easier alternative to the French horn and in Germany to this very day. If you go on German eBay and look for a used one of these, they're sold as is that exactly what French horns are sold as. They, they're called a walled horn. This is a walled horn. A French horn is a walled horn. Now, if you look carefully at the wrap of this thing, I'm gonna point something out here that show you how this is similar to a uh, French horn. It's actually a German instrument uh, invented by Blumel und Stetzel and Stetzel Bells in, uh, I believe, 1818, and if memory serves. But anyway, look at, the, look at this wrap here. Now, here's a B-flat French horn. And look at the wrap. Look at the arrangement. 
the, the tubing goes around straight through all the valves and it just has more tubing so it has to go around and around a few more times but this is the e instrument or this or the f version is the instrument that the ligne instrument the circular altar horn was based on you uh, in fact if you take one of these yeah it got dropped a few times knocked over on its stand but if you look at the wrap on this you'll see the same thing again goes around through the tubing you have to bundle up the wrap that way but it's a, basically the same instrument cut in half now i have e flat french horns i have a d french horn of uh, them in various shapes and, and keys but this is the best for illustrating purposes this was the template that the uh, m ligne horn was based on now you look at all of this cylindrical tubing it's about half and half if, if you were to measure it all it's about half and half and that's important because in the uh, ligne horn the ratio of cylindrical to conical tubing is about half and half now ligne went with a larger mouthpiece he went with a an alto horn mouthpiece. Why? Uh, probably because this straight tubing here was the same as the um, valved bugles of the uh, 19th century. So, and this type of mouthpiece would have been used in a valve bugle. And it, valve bugles start with straight tubing like this. And the, so there's. Um, in terms of design and building the instrument and making it workable, uh, there's that to consider. Now, the French horn is actually a German horn, um, as roughly the double length, as roughly the same proportions. You cut it in half and you get one of these. This is also referred to as a Walt horn in, in Germany. If you go to buy, um, French horn in Germany, you'll be looking for a wald horn. And, but if you go looking for a French horn in, on French eBay, you won't find it. They don't call it a French horn. They call it a corps d'harmonie. In other words, they call it a horn harmony, a harmony horn. Um, the, uh, and there is a French horn but it's a C instrument, a great big thing, with uh, paranet valves and uh, an ascending third valve. Um, so there you learn something. There is such a thing as a French horn, and it's still used in some French orchestras, but it's not the wald horn. That's uh, another thing again. The wald horn, uh, like most, if you look into the history of most brass instruments, you'll find that they were, um, a collaboration between two guys. One guy was usually a sheet metal worker, the guy who made the actual horn, and the other guy was usually a valve maker, and that was true of the 1818 horn. Um, it was made by Blumel, who was a sheet metal worker, and Stutzel, who made Stutzel valves. Uh, if you're at all familiar with cornopeans, uh, Stutzel valves, are the, the they look like a paranet valve, except the tubing comes out the bottom. And they, they look like uh, it takes quite a bit of skull sweat, sweat to figure out where the air goes in the tubing. But um, if you look at the original, now, in also in the 19th century, um, it is alleged that Moritz and Weibrecht uh, invented the tuba that has turned out to be incorrect. What they made, were, one of them, I can't remember which, one of them was a sheet metal worker again, um, but one, the other one was a, a designer, I think, not a valve maker. Um, 
But what they came up with was an ophoclide with uh, a valve branch grafted on it. They looked like paranet valves to me. Um, but they called it a bombardon, and there was uh, several different variations on this instrument. The tuba proper, the instrument we call a tuba today, was it actually invented and patented by Chevenet in 1853. And the sax horns were from the previous decade. Um, Antoine Adolf Sax patented the sax horns in uh, 1844, if I'm remembering right. Um, and they were a family derived from the valve bugles. Now, uh, Courtois challenged sax for the sax had the sole right to make sax horns for X amount of time, and uh, Courtois took him to court and uh, beat him because they there wasn't enough difference between sax's instruments and valve bugles to um, have the uh, have the rights. Now, if you look at the um, the modern sax horns, and that includes the uh, B flat horn everybody calls a flugelhorn but it's not it's an infantry sax horn um the alto horn and uh the the uh, small and large bore baritones uh, they have straight tubing going into the um valve block and the tuba family have look very similar and the way that you tell a tuba from a sax horn is you look at the lead pipe. If the lead pipe is straight, cylindrical, it's a sax horn. If the lead pipe is tapered, it's a tuba. And uh, that's about it, the difference between a sax horn and the tuba family of instruments. They're otherwise very close, and they used to be made pretty much in the same ranges. Um, Anyway, that's all for today. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Happy honking!